afternoon. It's uh, been a very dynamic 48 hours since uh, I was last here to talk to you. Um, the technical issues that the team has worked through, uh, they've, they've overcome a number of them, but we ran into one uh, that uh, we need a little more time to look at. But the spaceport, America's spaceport, has been very dynamic. We watched a launch control center, a new spacecraft, and a new rocket come to life, and we watched the media show up. We watched thousands of visitors show up in America watch this, uh, this new activity. So it's been a very dynamic 48 hours. Um, since we had our launch minus two day mission management team meeting, the uh, operations team out of the launch control center entered their launch countdown uh, Saturday morning. And then Saturday afternoon, we had a couple of lightning strikes out at the pad. We have a 32 story tall rocket out there and there were uh, lightning strikes on towers one and two. And our technical teams very quickly resolved that there were no issues with the vehicle uh, through timely analysis and timely data assessment. Saturday, uh, uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, we also uh, closed out an action from the launch minus two day mission management team, which was to uh, re-verify our communications coverage associated with some late changes that we had uh, with the uh, rocket and the spacecraft and, uh, and the team got comfortable with the uh, communications coverage plan. And then uh, Sunday was largely a day of rest and a day of preparation for the team. And uh, late Sunday evening, um, a subset of the team came in for the tanking meeting. Um, myself and our launch director, Charlie Blackwell Thompson, and our propulsive elements came in at uh, 10.50 um, uh, this evening, or the prior evening. And uh, we reassessed the uh, readiness to uh, load the vehicle with cryo, uh, cryogenic oxygen, cryogenic fuel, and uh, we were go for that. Uh, we had a go weather forecast, which was 20% chance of lightning, 40% chance of precipitation throughout the, uh, the uh, cryo loading period. And um, right around that same time frame, the team encountered a, uh, an issue with the verification of the Orion flight software. Um, it took about 11 minutes uh, to have a command acknowledged uh, to help verify the flight software and it was a simple misconfiguration. Uh, one of the um, command and control modules was not activated um, and uh, the team quickly resolved that. Um, and then once they configured it, uh, they quickly worked through the, um, through the uh, software verification and there were no concerns at that point with the Orion uh, software verification. Uh, the tanking meeting itself was very clean. Uh, we were done in 30 minutes and, and we gave the go for tanking. Uh, shortly thereafter, the, the um, the uh, Kennedy Space Center went into a lightning alert and the uh, tanking was delayed for about an hour. And then uh, once the cryo loading started, uh, we started the, um, the loading of the hydrogen. The team quickly uh, encountered a, um, a hydrogen leak at the eight inch quick disconnect, which is our fill and drain. And, um, and that happened when they went into the fast fill uh, phase. Uh, so they had to slow down the loading operation. They chilled down that interface and, and they managed to work their way through the full cryo loading operation of both the uh, core stage as well as the upper stage successfully. Um, once we got through the, uh, the uh, propellant loading on the rocket, both the uh, core stage and the upper stage, they started the engine bleed. Uh, we talked at our flight readiness review about the engine bleed. We knew that that was a risk headed into this launch campaign, and it would be the first time demonstrating that successfully. Uh, we did encounter an issue uh, uh, chilling down engine number three. We need the engine to be at the uh, cryogenically cool temperature such that when it starts, it's not shocked with all the, the, cold, um, uh, uh, the cold fuel that flows through it. So we needed a little extra time to, to assess that. Um, when the team uh, started working through that, they also saw an issue with a uh, vent valve um, at the inner tank. So the combination of not being able to uh, get the uh, engine three chilled down and then the uh, vent valve uh, issue that they saw at the inner tank really caused us to pause today and, and we felt like we needed a little, little more time. Um, there was also a series of uh, weather issues throughout the window. We would have been no go for weather at the beginning of the window due to precipitation. And uh, later on in the window, we would have been no go for lightning within the, uh, within the launch pad area. So um, the team worked through a number of issues today. 
Uh, the team was tired at the end of the day, and we just decided that it was the best to knock it off and uh, to reconvene tomorrow. So we've got a uh, mission management team meeting at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to give the team time to rest, first of all, and then come back fresh tomorrow and reassess um, what we learned today and then uh, develop a series of options. It's too early to say what the options are. And then, um, as, as uh, Jackie said earlier, uh, we will uh, come back and talk about where we stand um, tomorrow evening with all of you. Um, again, it's, it's an incredibly hard business that we have. Um, in, spite of, in spite of the challenges that we had, as well as some other um, constraints that the team had to work through and set up for, uh, for example, we had 42 collision avoidance cutouts that we had to manage over the course of the uh, of the two-hour window. Most of those were only a couple of seconds long, but there were a few that were about a minute long. Um, you know, when you start thinking about the type of mission that we're flying, it, it really helps you understand just how unique and how complex uh, the Space Launch System is and the Orion and, and the Artemis program is. We, we have this upper stage, the interim crowd propulsion stage, that lofts the, um, the spacecraft to a 975 nautical mile insertion orbit uh, along with the, uh, the SLS core stage. And with that, we need, we need the performance from it, but we fly through part of the orbital debris field, the micrometeorite and orbital debris field. And then uh, one orbit later, we commit to the point of translunar injection. So as we fly up through this orbital debris and then back down to low Earth orbit and then out through the point of translunar injection, we have to know where all of these objects are. And that explains those 42 cutouts. And, and that is something that our operations teams were prepared to do today. We just didn't get to the launch window. So um, a number of challenges. Uh, we were ready for some of them. And, and the uh, technical challenges we encountered on the, um, on the engine bleed and the vent valve are just some things we're going to have to go look at today, uh, look at tomorrow after we get a little smarter and get, get rested. So um, with that, I'll pass it to Jim. Yeah, so good afternoon. So the administrator and Mike uh, covered covered a great deal of things. I'll just highlight a few things for me. You know, I sit in a different vantage point uh, than than Mike does. His is a lot more fun, by the way. Uh, but but we you know we're we're, we're in the uh, LCC and and I'm.